There's a lot of ways you could invest your money, right? You could invest money doing a lot of things. You could buy crypto, buy Bitcoin, buy NFTs, right? You could start up a freaking Etsy shop with your girlfriend selling dream catchers, man. There is a million and one ways to make money these days, right? But I feel like real estate is far superior, far superior to Etsy shops, folks. And I'm going to tell you why right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here. Today's show is for my man, Terry. Terry, you're an investor I've been working with for quite some time now, helping you build a portfolio, right? Helping you build a portfolio because real estate, in my opinion, is the best investment, right? It beats out crypto. It beats out Bitcoin. It beats out SD shops with your girl, right? I know you got an affinity for them dream catchers, Terry. I know you love making them things. The little feather thing, that thing is dope. I get it, dog. But real estate makes a lot more sense, right? The deal I'm going to go over for you today, Terry, lenders, they'll lend you about 70 grand over 30 years to invest in this business because that's what it is. It's a business, not... It's, that's it. That's right. It's a business. Yeah, it's a house. People live there. But in reality, for you, Terry, it's a business. You're in Maryland. This house ain't in Maryland. You ain't going to be living there. It's a business. Right? Lenders, under normal circumstances, they're going to loan you 70 grand for this thing over 30 years. Try getting them to give you 70 grand over 30 years to make some of them feathery dream catchers with your girl. Ain't going to happen. Now, Terry, this particular one, I know you have in the past run into some issues with lenders, but that's the cool thing. Real estate is one of the easiest things to get loans on, right? A la the dream catchers, right? You can't can't get loans on freaking Etsy shops, folks. It's very, very hard to get uh, loans on Etsy shops. Real estate is very easy. So even if you have to pick it up cash today, Terry, down the road, boom, refi it out. You'll be able to hit these beautiful finance numbers. Let's jump into that shortly. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. This is the part where we actually get into the meat, right? We get into the meat. I see a lot of other people on the internet talking to you all about real estate investing, and they don't ever get into the meat, dude. They're selling the sizzle, but they don't ever sell you the steak. They don't ever actually talk about the deals. They just give you all this, like, Tony Robbins, like, rah, rah, rah crap. We ain't about the rah, rah, rah crap here. We're actually about doing real deals, real deals. Deals like this one, okay? This deal, 2224 East 31st, Lorain, Ohio, priced at 87500 all right? This one, this is a deal, folks. Now, we only have one photo, and in addition to that, we got a little bit of limited info, but that's okay. I'm going to walk you through that, right? Reason we only have one photo is because it's tenant occupied. That is normal, folks. It is normal for people selling rental properties not to bother the tenants go into their units. Don't worry. They're already living there. We're going to do more due diligence after this video. We're going to get the property inspected, right? You're doing offers contingent on inspections and appraisals, folks. You're not just blindly throwing stuff out there. That would be crazy. Um, you don't want to do that, right? You got to uh, trust but verify in real estate, right? So it's not uncommon for sellers not to bother their tenants and, and bother them for photos, especially in a post-COVID world, number one. Number two, um, I don't know what you're anticipating you're going to see, folks. Here's how it is. You got like low-ish income type tenants in neighborhoods like this and properties like this. Uh, when they move out, it's not going to be spectacular. You're probably going to need to like repaint it, uh, redo the floors. If there's carpet, you're going to replace it or get it down to the wood or vinyl lure, which is what I prefer, which hardens it between tenants, right? Things of that nature, right? So there's really nothing like super important for us to see, right? It's not like there's going to be a gold toilet or something like that, okay? Don't expect there to be like a $4,000 fridge and like uh, hard granite countertops. It's like looking impeccable. Not going to be the case, right? Uh, it's just probably going to be like Home Depot, Lowe's quality stuff. No big deal, right? As far as the neighborhood goes, this is in the Cleveland market, Cleveland, Ohio. If you Google best cash flow markets, Cleveland, Ohio always pops up at the top. But this 
is actually about 30 minutes west of the city of Cleveland. I like this city even better. Low rain. like it for two reasons. One, uh, I think a lot of you guys come to Northeast Ohio to invest in real estate because you're trying to escape like terribly liberal landlord-tenant policies that have kind of been eroding your rights as a landlord, okay? Now, Ohio, we're a red state. However, the city of Cleveland is not as uh, landlord-friendly as the rest of the state is, okay? Still much more landlord-friendly than what a lot, a lot of you guys are used to. Like, I mean, people from California, you're not allowed to evict people for like three years due to COVID. Your taxes are getting doubled every week. And then now they got like a new tax proposal out there where if uh, you leave your property vacant because you're so pissed off over the fact that tenants can steal your properties for three years, so you just leave that thing vacant, now they're trying to tax you additional, uh, additionally for leaving it vacant, right? So if you're trying to escape that, yeah, Cleveland, it's like the most landlord-friendly place in the world. But it ain't Arkansas. If your tenant's late on rent, you can't shoot that bitch. Seriously, that's a law in Arkansas. Google it. I'm, I'm just kidding. It's not, it's not really a law. Did you, did you really Google it? That'd be, that'd be messed up if you did. Anyway. Cleveland is much more landlord friendly than where a lot of you are focused on, but the city of Lorraine is actually even more landlord friendly. So I like it for that reason, number one. Number two, I like Lorraine because the pricing is typically better because when people are Googling it, they hear Cleveland, 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 Cleveland Cavs, Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Indians or Guardians, depending on how woke you are these days, right? All of the stuff you hear Cleveland, you don't ever pay attention to the surrounding areas, right? Like the Cleveland market, the city of Cleveland, folks, it's like 340,000 people living in Cleveland itself. That metro area, Holton Wise Services, we're looking at like three to four million. So it's a very small, um, like sub sub market in our greater market, but it gets all the attention, which drives prices up. And it's 2022, prices are getting driven up everywhere, right? So with Lorraine, I like it better. One, I think it's more landlord friendly. Two, I think the prices are better. And then number three, uh, they're getting a couple new naval yards that are probably coming in, right? That's really going to help this area, right? Uh, that is just something great. You know, there's going to add like three, 4,000 jobs. So I totally dig that. So dig the market. It's like a C-ish uh, grade market, right? So you're going to get, you know, decently low income tenants, but pretty reasonable to manage, right? You go Section 8 or cash paying, both work well. Now, as I said earlier, we're dealing with a little bit of limited info on this one. Uh, first thing I told you about was the pictures. That's normal. Uh, what is not normal is I do not have the rent amount for you, the current rents. I'm going to go over the market rents, which is much more important than the current rents anyway. Uh, we're going to have to do more due diligence to get the current rents. It's not really that important in the grand scheme of things. Uh, what you should really be buying, folks, is a market rent. You shouldn't be buying a current rent. That's just like what the one tenant is paying at a small period in time over your grand scheme of the investment, right? With this particular one, the seller wants uh, to have the buyer sign an NDA. That's pretty wild to have somebody sign an NDA just to figure out how much you're renting your fucking duplex for. Uh, but whatever, right? We'll have to handle that through the due diligence process, much like your inspection. But long term, this thing is a banger, dude. We're looking at uh, two two bedroom units here that should have a market rent of seven ninety five, right? So fifteen ninety, nineteen thousand nine or nineteen thousand eighty coming in for the year, right? After calculating your fixed and variable expense estimates that should be normal, right? And this is assuming Holton Wise is handling the management for you. Have sold $200 million worth of this stuff, folks. I have thousands of tenants. I've done this thousands of times. We know what we're doing. I think on average, a property like this should clear you a little bit over 10 k for the year. Now, as far as price goes, they're asking 87 and a half. I am sorry, but it is pie in the sky if you think you're going to take that one down guaranteed to be a bidding war. Dude, I just submitted an offer the other day on a property very similar to this uh, in this neighborhood. And I submitted, my offer is like 5K above list. And then the listing agent's like, yeah, sweet. This is the sixth offer I've got on this thing today. Very much anticipate the same thing happening here, right? So I believe you should come in heavy, 95K, right? You got to come in heavy to try to lock this one up. We may get lucky and be able to beat them down a little bit post-inspection. There's always something they never disclose on the disclosures that we find in the inspection, and we could beat them up a little bit. Uh, but there's going to be people fighting over this one. The numbers are just freaking amazing, right? So 95K, uh, you only got to put down 23750 The bank kicks in the rest, right? That is another reason you should be investing in real estate, man. F Bitcoin! F NFTs, F freaking investing in your girlfriend's Etsy shop, people. 
Real estate allows you to utilize other people's money. You can't get somebody to loan you $71,000 over 30 years to start a freaking Etsy shop selling dream catchers. That'd be insane. But you can do it with real estate, right? Which should mean this will probably pencil out about a 27% return on your cash, folks. Let's do the dang thing. Let me know. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.